In early 2022, Microsoft announced plans to acquire Activision Blizzard, and if the deal ends up going through, Microsoft and Xbox Game Studios will become the third largest video game publisher in the world. However, while Microsoft has been picking up studios left and right over the years, there has been several indicators of deeper and more troublesome issues when it comes to games and development under the Xbox branch of Microsoft. With studios left unchecked, development teams not being held accountable, and some staff members leaving in mass exodus, we were left asking the question, is Microsoft and Xbox Game Studios the real reason that multiple games over the years have struggled to meet expectations at launch? Or are the individual studios really the ones to blame? Over the last few months, it's been really interesting to see a lot of the leaks and reports suggesting what Halo Infinite's development cycle really looked like. Some rumors suggesting that the bulk of development actually didn't even start until 2018, and by 2019, they were already in full-on crisis mode. And more and more little things come out, like that they prototyped a hero-based gameplay like Overwatch. But ultimately, the general consensus as far as Halo Infinite is concerned right now is that at the core, there's a good game in there. But boy, is it lacking content, there are very slow updates, and there's constantly more problems arising than there are solutions. A lot of fans have turned very cold towards 343 Industries as the company continues to struggle to get the ball rolling. You can't help but to look at Halo Infinite's development cycle and wonder what happened in these six years. There's a ton of speculation as what really went wrong with Halo Infinite during its development. A lot of people point to Microsoft's excessive use of contract workers, rotating leadership, changing goals. And over the years, we've seen many different games struggle in development hell, but rarely Rarely do we ever see a triple A game backed by a publisher as large as Microsoft with their Xbox Game Studios have such a clear, troubled, and turbulent development history. There was six years of this troubled development going on, and it seemed like Microsoft never really stepped in and intervened or questioned what even was going on with the new Halo game during that entire process until maybe 2020 when there was a ton of backlash with the gameplay showing. Did it seem like really any larger upper managerial moves were even being made? And still, even now, the state of Halo is really rough. Not only was Halo Infinite announced as live service, but then released without a lot of features, had some of the slowest churn for new content ever, there's a lot of new bugs constantly popping up, and there's obviously a big disconnect as far as how a live service should work and how Halo Infinite is working. So while people are quick to flame community managers on Twitter or some individual developer like they are single-handedly in charge of making sure problems don't rise out of a broken leadership starting all the way beyond 343, I think the real problem here isn't 343, but it's Microsoft itself. The thing is, Microsoft as a publisher has done this many times and seemingly is still doing this as this vicious game development cycle is repeating itself across Microsoft-owned studios and they've done it before Halo Infinite was even struggling along. 2002, Microsoft acquires Rare, one of Nintendo's biggest second-party developers, and gains a ton of intellectual properties to go with it. And after barely utilizing a lot of the IP Rare ends up getting shifted to Connect development in the late 2000s for a few years into the early 2010s before leadership shifted post Xbox One's scuffed launch where Xbox ended up realigning that the Xbox brand is about gaming, not so much the gimmicks that tanked the Xbox One's launch all the way back in 2013. Now Microsoft needed some good first party games to play and Rare with a team of 200 people actually began prototyping a game that could cater to both social players while having an addicting and competitive yet adventurous gameplay loop to grow a dedicated player base around. In 2014, after just about five months of prototyping, Rare had a working build built in Unity for their game idea, and Microsoft quickly greenlit the game for real development from the ground up to begin in what would turn out to be Sea of Thieves. And to make development easier and speed up the development process, for the first time ever, Rare would actually switch from their own in-house engine and utilize the more popular and easily accessible Unreal Engine 4. Development would begin in 2014, and by 2015, just one year later, they had enough progress in the game to show case gameplay and visuals at E3 in 2015. At that point, the game was originally set for a 2017 release, meaning the game had a good three-year development cycle planned, which seems pretty standard for a lot of games in the industry, but the game would end up being delayed until 2018, and when this game came out, it definitely was in an incredibly bare-bones state. Like, I mean, there was some water, 
some treasure, some quests, and some broken PvP, and there was like a fort in the distance that everyone would fight for. Now don't get me wrong, I love the game and I loved it when it came out, and I still love it today, but for a live service game, this game had nothing but a drip feed of content for years. Only last year or so did some real meaningful content start to come out, and it seems like this coming year is the first year where they actually have a plan to have real releases of meaningful content on a more regular regular basis, with just more activities, more stories, and more things to be told in the game. But it's 2022 now, this game has been out for nearly five years, and there's still some serious game-breaking bugs that existed all the way in day one that haven't been fixed yet, like simple hit registration and desync. It shows up in the patch notes as a known issue every single seasonal update, and yet there hasn't been any real effort into trying to fix this. It's been a sloppy post-launch development for four years, and it's only now really starting to take shape. Things are getting better now, but once again, we're asking where was Microsoft in all of this. This is Microsoft toting that this is their first party game, and you would think Microsoft would have stepped in and added more resources much earlier on. Maybe additional support studios or more funding way early on closer to the actual launch of the game so that the game would be built into this evolving universe that was originally promised with the game, rather than having to subject the player base to a very lengthy and slow content cycle. The fact that Sea of Thieves launched in the state that it did. If anything, says a lot about Microsoft as a publisher that they were willing to let a game that was as bare bones as Sea of Thieves was day one even release without stepping in before the game was finished and finalized for release and opening up additional resources to really flesh out the game. Sea of Thieves was one of the more recent examples of Microsoft having this very hands-off approach as a publisher. That might be comfortable for work environments, and obviously there's been so many many awful stories of video game crunch and the stress that comes with that, but I can't help to think that if Rare would have had more resources available to them through Microsoft, the game probably would have been much more fleshed out earlier on and wouldn't have suffered from the fast dwindling player base it had day one, where to this day Sea of Thieves has been able to recover a more dedicated player base, however, we can't help but to wonder what that player base would have looked like had the game actually launched with a large amount of things to actually do and people didn't just get bored and then randomly come back years later to see if it ever got better. Why is it that Microsoft didn't even consider stepping in with how slow things were back then until it was way too late? Obviously since then there's probably been a lot of additional support to move Sea of Thieves along to where it is today, like that huge campaign crossover they did with Disney and things moving to the future, but it just seems like it was such a delayed response from Microsoft. They're the publisher and this is their first party developer. It's really interesting when you look at other AAA publishers that pretty much rarely ever miss a video game deadline. Call of Duty has been this massive machine for years that has never once seen a delay from its initial launch window. And while of course Activision hasn't had the cleanest track record when it comes to handling employees, they definitely do stick to their timetables. And if a player base in a Call of Duty game isn't doing well, they will throw every gimmick under the sun to at least try to constantly get people roped back into their game. In pre-development for Call of Duty games, We've seen Activision shift studios around, move developers around, to make sure whatever timetable is set for the game's release is always hit every single year. And once again, we're not saying Activision is the most ethical publisher, but if they can put a Call of Duty game out every year, why couldn't Microsoft get a Halo game finished in six times the amount of time? The real question is, what was 343 Industry doing for three years? Were they incubating ideas from 2016 to 2018? Did Microsoft never actually take a look under the hood to see where the game was and how it was doing? Was there any comprehensive idea of what timetable they were looking at? So many people had pointed out the whole contract workers being fired after 15 months as a major issue, but shouldn't Microsoft or 343 Industries have noticed that as a big issue years prior to the game running into all of the delays and issues that it's had? I mean, all it takes is one bad person in leadership
leadership, not making sure teams are cohesively working towards a similar goal, or if there's a no goal in mind, no accountability, an entire project could fall apart, so why wasn't Microsoft even checking on this type of thing? If contract workers leaving every 15 months really messed up production, why wasn't there a system in place to see exactly what contract workers were working on so that the permanent employees would know how to go and make tweaks to the contractor's works if that one person was now gone? Was there not any consideration of Microsoft to step in to see how things were going until it was way too late? If you look at the credits of Halo Infinite, it's amazing how many people worked on this game in one way or another, yet the game itself has so little to show for it, and it just really doesn't make that much sense. In 2018, we saw the very first look of what Halo Infinite would be, and we saw beautiful landscapes with different biomes like a desert, forest, snow-covered mountaintops. There was wildlife and sandy beaches, and most of this didn't end up in the actual game. Jason Schreier released a inside look timeline of what was going on during Halo Infinite's development, suggesting that in early 2019, the game was already in full crisis mode. And while we don't know the inner happenings at 343 Industries during this time, we do know that by August 2019, Tim Longo, the Halo Infinite creative director, decided to leave 343 Industries. With Tim Longo being a part of 343 Industries for quite some time and a large portion of the development, it did seem like a bit of a surprise. Prize. However, Microsoft reassured everyone that producer Mary Olsen had already taken over as the game's head of campaign. And mind you, Mary Olsen's entire history working at 343 Industries prior to this point was as a sound producer for the Halo games and later was promoted to overall executive producer. So to have the entire weight of the campaign put onto a former audio producer with a deadline coming up in just a couple of months, and not only two months later did did Mary Olsen end up leaving 343 Industries as well. By mid-2020, the game was set to release in just four months, and still fans hadn't even seen campaign or multiplayer yet. And finally, in July, they did an eight-minute gameplay demo, and it was panned by the audience, subpar graphical quality, especially since this was supposed to be a launch of a next-gen title. And about two weeks later, this game that was toted as an Xbox Series X launch title was delayed. There are no specifics as how long the delay would look like. There were some reports that Halo Infinite was considered to split the release into multiple parts, something that Phil Spencer even confirmed was a discussion, but not something they decided to go through with. And it was around this time that those reports about creative turnover and a whole lot of talk that the reason that the game development was taking so long at this point was because of the brand new Slipspace engine taking up a large chunk of the actual development process. Fans, of course, were skeptical, but still optimistic that the game would still have a very large scope to it. Just three months later, studio head Chris Lee leaves the project, and by the end of the year, it was fully confirmed that the game was going to be delayed until fall of the following year, which I guess means December. So what happened in 2021 after that? Well, we don't really have all the details other than Joseph Staten was brought on board, a Halo veteran who had worked on the original franchise, and honestly, we suspect he probably did literally as much as one individual person can do who is transferred to a brand new company and then put in charge of all of these people he doesn't know, but I can't help but to wonder that during this time period where it was very clear that the game itself needed a lot of core work done, how Microsoft didn't think that besides planning for the release and getting the game up to shape for an actual release, they probably should get a team together or find a studio who can work on some post-launch content, because if everyone's full force fixing up this game, no one's working on the future after that. And it very much seems like a situation where Microsoft chose to fix a problem problem rather than foster a good solution that could set the game up for the future and the franchise and also 343 Industries to be successful with their game post-launch. With the fact that there was issues when the game came out, like Big Team Battle not working for multiple weeks before any developers were able to even get around to fixing that, should be a pretty big indicator that as soon as the game launched, the team was right there with as much content that has been made for the game, more or less put into the game, and that was it. There was no plans on any future content actually solidified or in progress at that time. And it's only now, after another problem arises with all the backlash that Halo has, that Microsoft wakes up and realizes, hey, maybe we should have a team working on post-release content, since fans are complaining about it, and they went on to bring certain affinity on board to work on some 
some sort of content regarding Halo, though we don't really know what that extent is. It always seems like Microsoft is making a reactionary move to issues rather than actually going in ahead of time and stopping these issues from arising in the first place. One of my favorite franchises I never get to talk about is Perfect Dark, and some of you may remember the announcement at the 2020 Game Awards. It was a big reveal that Microsoft's new studio, The Initiative, had been working on this for a couple of years, and The Initiative was secretly formed in 2008 by some gaming developer veterans, dare I even say gaming developer legends, who had track records of working on some of the biggest and greatest video games of all time. Tomb Raider, God of War, you get the idea. This staff at The Initiative was like a dream team development studio, and for a while they even toted that The Initiative was working on the first ever quadruple A video game. So I was hyped when they showed off the trailer for Perfect Dark finally getting a reboot, and it's been two years and we haven't seen anything on the game. Actually, what we have found out is that in the last 12 months actually, more than 50% of the initiative staff actually ended up leaving the studio, with some reports suggesting the reason was frustration over slow progress on the game being made, and other reports suggesting that it doesn't look like the initiative has been acquiring new talent either. Microsoft announced earlier this year that third-party studio Crystal Dynamics, who made Tomb Raider and the Avengers game, Game, would be partnering up to develop Perfect Dark, and honestly from the looks of it, the game still could be another two to three years out. For development that started all the way back in 2018, that's another game under Microsoft's helm with six, maybe seven years of actual development before the game releases, and honestly with the track record that Microsoft and Xbox Game Studios have, we see it happening time and time again with games like Halo and Perfect Dark, it makes us wonder if Microsoft just green lights a project that then never comes back to check on the actual progress that is happening sometimes for years before wondering if they need to consider finding solutions for any pipeline holdups that come up at the exact moment of the clog. And of course, this is Microsoft, right? This isn't a small publishing studio that's tight on money and only have so many people to look into projects or can only fund so much money for games. These are the same guys that spent $90 million on a Halo MMO project that they canceled after just a year of development. They also spent $75 million on a Fable online game that was nearly finished in alpha and then just cancelled it because the alpha wasn't going that well and they closed the studio and fired everybody. This is the same studio behind Halo Online, Halo Mega Blocks. These guys spent $500 million on advertising for the Xbox 360 Kinect in 2010. It just shows time after time again when serious pipeline issues hold up a game, Microsoft will jump in and resolve the one issue. But not necessarily take the steps necessary to better off the company at that point and prevent more issues from coming up. It always seems like a quick knee-jerk reaction always being made, making Microsoft games always two steps behind the competitors. And while at the end of the day it's easy to point fingers at a studio, maybe these studios are really plagued by the bigger issue, Microsoft. Alright, so I know this is a little bit of a different type of video, but if you guys watch this far in the video, we really do appreciate it. We're trying to broaden our horizon on what we talk about. This is something we're really passionate about. We've talked about this so much just on our own and this is just a really glaring issue when three or more of your favorite franchises are all plagued by the same publisher doing the same thing across all of these things. It's easy if you're just a Halo fan getting frustrated at 343 or a Sea of Thieves fan getting frustrated at Rare, but you start to see it across everything that Microsoft is involved in and you start to wonder if maybe the problem comes from higher up. Nonetheless, Thanks so much for watching. If you guys want to subscribe and make sure your notification bell is turned on, that way you actually get notified when we do put videos out, and it also tells the algorithm to do something, maybe some of the time. I don't know. That's it for today, though. We'll see you guys all next time with a brand new video.